Good day po. Welcome sa Competency Appraisal Course and this is Auditing Cluster. So yours truly, Jovic G. Okay. So my task is to discuss to you the audit of revenue and receipt cycle, audit of sales, receivable, and cash balances. So to start with, um, let's discuss first the different audit objectives. So the assertions, transactions, and balances. So the first assertion, as mentioned here, is the existence or occurrence. So to verify existence or occurrence assertion in terms of transaction, recorded sales are valid and represent goods actually shipped or services actually rendered. So in this case, you're going to check from books of accounts or from records down to the source document. So if you're going to check this one, so you may check first the uh, re revenue book or the sales book down to different bill of lady, okay, or maybe the credit sales invoice or the sales invoice of the company. Then recorded cash receipts represents cash collected during the period. So in this case, you're going to start checking from uh, the cash receipts books down to it may be official receipts or sales, cash sales invoice of the company. And then recorded CS adjustments represents authorized discounts, returns, or uncollectible accounts. So you're going to check the journal, right? Journal vouchers or journal book as to its authorization. So you're going to check the signatories of the different authorized personnel. And then in terms of balances, uh, recorded amounts or accounts receivable exist at the balance sheet page. So you may uh, use confirmation of the account receivable balances as to its confirmation, you may use negative or positive confirmation. Negative for immaterial balances and positive naman for material balances. As to complete the assertion, so this is opposite of what is the examination of the or verification of the uh, existence or occurrence assertion. So, all CS cash collections and CS adjustments are recorded. So, we're going to start with the source document down to the books of accounts of the company. Then, in terms of balances naman, accounts receivable include all amounts due from the customer. So, uh, this is to assure that all of the uh, transactions are recorded in the books of accounts of the company. Obligations and rights. So, in this case, so the entity has the right to collect recorded receivables. So you're going to check this one based on the receipts of the company. And the account receivable represents the legal, enforceable claims of the entity. As to its valuation, transactions, sales revenues receivable, cash collection, and adjustments are correctly journalized, summarized, posted, and properly valued. As to your amounts, no? From the different source document, if it was appropriately transferred, or the amounts the same, or what was actually in the source document. So, kung ano yun sa source document, dapat yun din yung record ng company, or ni bookkeeper, or ni accountant, and then, and so on, and so forth. So, the balances naman, uh, accounts is able are properly val valued as recorded in the customer ledger. And in this case, you're going to check there are need to provide allowance for doubtful accounts which represents a reasonable estimate of uncollectible accounts. Presentation is school sure. So this is more on uh, sales cash receipts and sales adjustments are properly presented, classified, and disclosed in the financial statement. So you're going to check if it is actually a sales transaction. So correct ba siya na record mo? as sales or di kaya other income ng company? Or is it right to record that one as sales or is it right to record that one as other income of the company? And then, in terms of balances, so, accounts receivable are properly classified in the balances. So, accounts receivable is part of the current assets. And part of the trade and other receivable, the second line item of the balance sheet. Accounts receivable, assigned or pledged, have been properly disclosed in the financial statement. So, proper disclosure in the notes to financial statement as to its assignment of the receivable and pledging of the receivable. So, let's try multiple choice theory. No? So, the first one, uh, an auditor most likely would review an entity's periodic accounting 
for the numerical sequence of shipping documents and invoices to support management's financial statement assertion of A. Existence or occurrence B. Rights and obligations C. Valuation or D. Completeness So what do you think? So I'll give you 10 seconds now yeah. Okay, so the correct answer here is letter D, completeness. Because you're talking about uh, verifying completeness assertion with the use of numerical sequence. Second one, cut-off test designed to detect credit sales made before the year end of the year, uh, before end of the year that have been recorded in the subsequent year provided assertions or provide assur assurance about management's assertion of so cut off procedure or cut off test dot so what would be the verification or it would verify what assertion a presentation b completeness c rights or d existence yeah 10 seconds Okay, so the answer for this one is same pa rin, no? completeness. Kasi you're talking about correct recording. Okay, recording in a proper accounting period. That's why this is more on completeness as a result. Now for number three, which of the following most likely would give the most assurance concerning the valuation as a result of accounts receivable? A. Vouching amounts in the subsidiary ledger to details on shipping documents. So, B, comparing receivable turnover ratios with industry statistics for reasonableness. C, inquiring about receivables pledged under the loan agreement. Or D, assessing the allowance for uncollectible accounts for reasonableness. Go. So if you're talking about valuation, no, you're talking about the net realizable value and part of the competition ng net realizable value is in letter D. Assessing the allowance for uncollectible accounts for reasonableness. Ayan. So itong letter A, this is more on existence. Na. C naman more on presentation and disclosure. So B, comparing, this is more on industry benchmarking. Ayan. Four, auditing standards define a confirmation as the process of obtaining and evaluating a direct communication from a third party in response to a request for information about a particular item affecting financial statements assertion. So two assertions for which confirmation of accounts receivable balances provides primary evidence are A. Completeness and valuation B. Valuation and rights and obligation C, rights and obligations and existence, or D, existence and completeness. Alright, so if you're talking about confirmation, you're talking about verifying the uh, existence of that particular receivable. That's why this is more on Siyempre, existence. So, ano pala yung iba pa? So, the answer is letter C, rights and obligation and existence. Okay? So, rights and obligation is this actually the receivable of the company. Uh, the company has the legal right to collect the receivable of that particular customer. And existence, siyempre, for confirmation, if it is actually existing or valid, a receivable of a particular period. Yeah, so let's discuss more on the MCQ competitions. So, let's proceed first. Siyempre, the first one is yung elucidative problem number one. Suggestive solutions, suggested solutions. So, the problem here, this is more on cut-off procedure. So, you are engaged to perform the audit of accounts of the JGC Corporation for the year ending December 31, 2019. 
and have observed the taking of the physical inventory of the company on December 27, 2019. Only merchandise shipped by the JGC Corporation to customers up to and including December 27, 2019 have been removed or excluded from inventory. The inventory as determined by physical inventory count and has been recorded on the books by the company's controller. No perpetual inventory records are maintained and all sales are made on the FOB shipping point basis. So, yun yung clue natin. So, the following list of sales invoices are entered in the sales books for the months of December 2019 and January 2020 respectively. So, first question, how much sales for the month of December 2019 were erroneously recorded in January 2020? Second question, how much sales for the month of January 2019 were erroneously recorded in December 2020? Third one, how much is the correct amount of sales for the month in the December 31, 2020? And yun lang pala, tatlo lang. Ayan. So let's start with the first one. Okay. So suggested solutions, numbers 1 to 3. So note that all sales are made on FOB shipping point basis. The shipping point upon shipment is considered as sold. So thus, if shipped on or before December 31, 2019, it is considered as part of December 2019 sales. Otherwise, if the shipment is beyond December 31, 2019, it is considered now as January 2020 sales, especially if it is uh, on January, no? so after December, it may be exactly at January, month of January. So it is part of January 2020 sales. So this is the given sales invoices. You're going to check, syempre, since shipping point, no? so ang checking po natin is yung date of shipment. Yeah. So let's start with the first one. So since this is December, na na ship na siya. So okay lang. B naman December rin. So okay. Ito this is January 5. So beyond December uh, 31 2019. Therefore, this is sales of January. Okay. So this is not sales of December but sales of January 2020. Then your letter D seem since this is January 8, 2020, then the record siya sa so December 2019. So, it is still sales of January 2020. Kasi nga, it was shipped January 8, 2020 na. So, after December 31, 2019. So, since this is, yung letter AE, since this is December, so still okay. Walang problema. Uh, December pa rin. So, F. Okay, walang problema. And since this is January na, so therefore this is years of January 2020. And last one for December, so since this is December 31, so exactly na, December 31, therefore, okay siya, this is December 2019. Yes. For January naman, the first one is yung I. Since this is December, 29, 2019, and recorded in January 2020, so wrong, no? so this is, or this must be a sale of December 2019, not January 2020. And then this one, January, so okay, January rin. January na ship, 4K, okay, walang problema. And the last one, L, since this is ship December 31, so therefore, this is or this must be part of the sales of December 2019. So again, we're done. So let's try to check the questions. First one is how much sales for the month of December 2019 were erroneously recorded in January 2020. So let's check yung December, uh, January 2020 na sales invoice no? kung meron ba may saling December 2019. So, mayroong dalawa, right? Ito, first one, yung I at saka L. So, the total is 12,500. 
letter B. Now for uh, number two, how much sales for the month of January were erroneously recorded December? So, balik tag naman. So, ito, C, B, and G. So, these are sales of January 2020 but recorded December 2019. So, for a total of CC2000, letter D. And lastly, how much is the correct amount of sales for the month ended December 31, 2020? So here to start with, Jempa recorded sales for December 143,000. This is you're going to put all uh, sales invoice of December before adjustments. And December sales recorded in January. So this is your uh, question number one, 12,500. And less January sales recorded in December, 62,000. So less mo lang. The total adjusted sales for December is 93,500. So the answer is letter C, 93,500. Alright, so we're done with elusive problem number one. Let's proceed to elusive problem number so this is more on uh, the computation of allowance for, of doubtful accounts, allowance for doubtful accounts. So illustrative problem number two: the company's account receivable subsidiary ledger shows the following information. So you do have here the customers: Jovi, John, John, Beer, Joe, Mary, Jocelyn, and Janet. So mga JJJ na Department of Accounting Education. So the next one, the estimated budget rates below are based on the is company's receivable collection experience. So, yung age of accounts from 0 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, 91 to 120, and over 120 days. So, meron siya 1%, 1.5%, 3%, 10%, and 50% respectively. And the allowance for doubt for or budget's account had a credit balance of 7,000 on December 31, 2019 before adjustments. So question number one, the adjusted account receivable balance of the company on December 31, 2019 is. And then for question number two, the adjusted balance of allowance for budgets of the company Question number three, the balance expense of the company. And lastly, the question number four is the net realizable value of a conceivable of the company on December 31, 2019. So, syempre, what you're going to do here, since this is aging of receivable, and unfortunately, hindi given yung uh, groupings as to the age of the account receivable. That's why, ikaw yung mag-group ng mga account receivable as to its or based on its age. Gagawa kayo ng aging schedule. So, the balance of December 31, 2019 and the uh, next column is for 0 to 30 days, 61 to uh, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days, 91 to 120, and over 120 days. So, let's start with kay Jovit, no? Ayan. So, meron siyang total balance of 7,360. So, yung first one, since this is December, so, it belongs or group niya 0 to 30 days. Then, yung pangalawa, since this is 11, so, November, November, so, pag November, more than 30, so, 31 to 60 days. So, meron siyang 42,360. Now, Kay John, ayan. so the first one, since this is September, so September is 91 to 120 days, so 24,000. And the August is over 120 days, so 17,840. Kay John Weir, ayan. so first one, December, so 0 to 30 days. Uh, October, 61 to 90 days. So, meron siyang 40,000 and 21,200 respectively. Kay Jo Marie, ayan. 
So, first one is November, so 31 to 60 days, so 46 to 180. And then, second one is yung this, uh, October, uh, 44,000 to 61 to 90 days. Then, kay Jassel, yeah. since both of them are December, so 0 to 30 days, total 63,200. And the last one, kay Ma'am Janet, so, 34,800. So, since this is September, so 91 to 120 days. Okay, so you're done grouping, no? The accounts based on their age. Yan. So, total mo lang lahat. So, 30, 361, 680, the total balance of receivable. And then, 0 to 30 naman is 131, 200. 31 to 60 is 88,640. 61 to 90 is 65,200. And 91 to 120 is 58,800. And lastly, for over 120 days, that is 17,840. So, meron ka ng total balance of the receivable. No? And nag-group mo na siya based on their age. So, what you're going to do, multiply the percentage of uncollectability. So, saan galing yung 1%, 1.5%, 3%, 10%, 50%, 50%, sir? this is based on the given. Ayan. So, 1%, 1.5%, 3%, 10%, and then 50%. So, multiply mo lang. Ayan. So, for... 30 to, uh, 0 to 30 days, so meron sa 1,312, 31 to 60, 1,329.60, 61 to 90, 1,956, 91 to 120, 5,880, and over 120 days is 8,934. A total of 19,397.60. So the total, ayan, so don't forget, no, if this is aging of Accounts receivable, the resulting value is the required allowance. Okay. So, kumbaga, the ending or adjusted allowance for those full accounts. So, yung 19,397.60 is the ending or adjusted balance of the allowance for that full accounts. So, let's start with the question number one. Ayan. The adjusted account receivable balance of Dai Company at December 31, 2019 is. So the answer is 361,680. For number two, the adjusted balance of allowance for budgets uh, of Dai Company at December 31, 2019 is. So siempre yung required allowance or the resulting value, no? resulting value of the aging of AR. And number three, the adjusted balance of balance expense of the company at December 21, 2019 is so 12,397.60. So how come it is 12,397.60 or letter C? So add the adjusted 19, uh, 397.60 at saka yung add the unadjusted based on the uh, problem given, so meron siyang balance expense, additional provision na 12,397.60. Now for number 4, the net realizable value of account receivable of the company at December 31, 2019 is. So if you're going to compute net realizable value, it is just gross account receivable less the or all the allowances. So in this case, allowance for the full accounts lang, no? So AR end, this one, and then add the adjusted 19,397.60. So you do have NRV of 342, 282.40. Letter A. Okay, so we're done with illustrative problem number one and the illustrative problem number so the next one here is the illustrative problem number 2. Yan. So 
this industry problem number three, this is more on the uh, proof of cash, and the four column bank reconciliation. So you were able to obtain the following information during your audit of Dito company. So reconciling items, the adjusted balance, and December transaction. So the requirement is you have to prepare a four column bank reconciliation for the month of December using the form that reconciles the both the book and the bank balances to correct the cash amount. So yung adjusted balance method. And adjusting entries as of December 31, 20. Okay, so let's compute the four column bank reconciliation, the proof of cash. So let's start with the bank balances. So these are the bank balances as given. Ayan. So 230, 420, the disbursements, and the ending. So as you can see, question mark, sir, bakit may 150? So ikaw yung magkakompute ng 1. So, how to compute for this one? 150. So, beginning na 230 plus receipts na 420. Then, less disbursement sa so 500. So, meron siyang ending na 150,000. And then, let's start with the reconciling item. The first reconciling item of the deposit uh, of the bank is the deposit in transit no? or the undeposited collections. So, yung first one is yung November. So, since November, so put here sa November and 200. And then, the DAC 200 is because this is related to November na. So, it was, it will be recorded pagka December na. So, included na siya dun sa receipts na 420. That's why you deduct 200,000. Now, for December, so, December, so doon mo ilagay sa si December reconciliation. Ayan, so 120. And since this is December, so probably this will be uh, deposited pagka January na no, or for the next month. That's why you add 120. And then, we're done with the deposit in transit. So, the next reconciling item under the uh, bank balance is the outstanding sex. So, pag outstanding checks, the first one is yung negative 80,000. So, saan galing yung negative 80,000? So, ayan, 80. So, why is it deducted, di ba? Uh, outstanding checks are deducted to compute for the adjusted bank balance. And, it is deducted sa disbursements is because uh, this November, this will be recorded or reflected na sa bank balance. Uh, bank statement mo pagka December na. So, included na siya sa 500, but hindi man yan siya December. Okay? That is for November. That's why you deduct 80,000. And the December outstanding checks, so outstanding deduction na. Okay. And then, add 60Y, you add 60 cents, itong 60, this will be uh, adjusted or reflected na pagka next month na siya. But since this is December disbursement, so that's why you add 60 sa disbursements because hindi pa siya na-add sa 500,000. So you add 60,000 sa disbursements of December. The erroneous bank debit. So pag bank debit, it means withdrawal, right? So error, withdrawal ng banko. So, error in the point of view ni bank. So, in this case, so, na-withdraw siya sa, sa November. No? So, what you're going to do, you're going to add back 10,000. And, syempre, for the next month, ma-adjust yan siya pag the next month, right? So, if that's the case, anong gagawin ni banko? I-deposit niya. I-reflect niya as part of the credit. That's why, you deduct 10,000 sa receipts. Kasi na-include yan siya as adjustment sa receipts ng December. So, erroneous bank debit sa December, ayan, so 20, add back mo siya no, kasi na-withdraw siya, pero hindi sa'yo. Ayan. Hindi sa'yo yung withdrawal. So, error lang ng bank ko. So, add back 20,000. And in this case, 
since na withdraw sa December, so na disburse siya sa December, that's why you deduct 20,000. Kasi hindi naman yan siya disbursement. No? Na disburse lang siya ng banko, but error. In error. That's why you deduct 20,000. Okay? In erroneous bank credits for November, so bank credits means uh, na-deposit siya sa account mo, no? Pero hindi sa'yo yung deposit. So that's the case, guys. So what you're going to do, i-deduct mo yung 40,000. And syempre, pagka next month, kasi next month yan ma-adjust, no, November, so December, December yan siya ma-adjust as disbursement, that's why you less 40,000 disbursement. Kasi ma-adjust siya as part ng disbursement, 500,000. Pero hindi naman yan siya disbursement sa December. That's why you deduct 40,000. Okay? And, erroneous bank credits sa December, so as you can see, bank credits na deposit yan siya, hindi sa'yo, so you deduct 30,000. And since this is na deposit sa'yo, sa bank account mo, pero hindi yan siya deposit mo, so you deduct 30,000 sa receipts. Okay? Sa December. Remember ha, that this is a disbursement columns, these are December receipts and disbursement. Okay? So, in this case, yung 30, uh, kasali siya sa 420 as receipts since na-deposit yan siya. Pero, in error. That's why you deduct 30,000 sa receipts. And as a check, you deposited. So, in this case, no? ayan, 10,000. So, as you can see, NSF check siya na redeposit. So, NSF check na withdraw siya first, right? Na disburse yan siya. But then, na redeposit, na good na siya. So, you deduct both the receipts and disbursement kasi na double. No? It was uh, recorded as receipts or reflected sa bank as receipts and then, nabalik kasi nga, no sufficient fund. And then, later on, na redeposit within the within the month. Okay? So na double na siya. So you deduct 10,000 sa receipts and disbursements, 10,000. Okay? So na double siya ng withdraw, nakuhaan ang 10,000 ang account mo and then na receipt uh, na record siya as receipt sa account mo as a deposited. Double. That's why you deduct both the receipts and the disbursements. Okay? And this is now the adjusted bank balance of Dito Company using proof of cash. Yeah. So, 320,294 receipts, 410 for disbursements, and 200,000 for December 21. So, we're done with the bank. No? Let's proceed naman sa point of view sa book. Yeah, book balances. So, based on the given, 270, 407 disbursements, and 90 na uh, ending. Ayan. So, as you can see, 90 na ending, and then question mark yung beginning. So, what you're going to do, work back mo lang to copy for the beginning. So, if that's the case, ayan, ending na 90, plus uh, deduct, ayan, deduct mo yung receipts, kasi po work back tayo. Pa reverse. So, you deduct 270 na receipts and then disbursements na 407 add back. So, you do have here the beginning na 227,000. And then, let's start with the first reconciling item. No? Book reconciling item is yung uh, customer's note collected by bank November. So you do have here 100,000 added since credit memos or customer note collected by bank are added no, to compute for the adjusted okay, adjusted balance or adjusted book balance. And you deduct here sa receipts kasi nga yung November probably marirecord yan siya sa December. But hindi man yan siya December receipts, right? So it was included as part of 270,000 receipts. So you deduct 100,000 customer note collected by bank November. 
Now, meron din siyang December, no? Ayan. So, you can see my ahe dyan, no? Adjusting journal and Kasi that is the question for number two. So, never mind nyo lang yan. So, 120. Ayan. So, customer note collected by banks in December. And since this is customer note collected by the bank December, so probably, ma-adjust yan siya pagka-January. So, hindi siya kasali sa receipts, no? Na 270. That's why you add 120 sa receipts na December. And then, bank service charges. November, so bank service charge is a debit memo. So pag debit memo, it is deducted to compute for the adjusted book balance. So in this case, 200. Ayan. At 2,000, I mean. And then, the dock mo siya sa disbursement kasi nga yung November, probably ma-adjust yan siya pagka December. So ang adjustment yan is disbursement, right? So nasali siya sa 407,000 na disbursement. Pero hindi naman yan siya disbursement sa December. That's why you deduct 2,000. And bank service charge, ayan. So December, so deduction, no? Ayan. And, add mo yung 3,000 sa disbursement sa December. Kasi hindi pa yan siya nasali sa 407,000 disbursement. That's why you add 3,000 sa disbursement ng December. And NSF check, ayan. So, this is NSF check not redeposited. Okay? So, if that's the case, hindi yan siya na redeposit, so, deduction sa books ng company. So, if that's the case, syempre, uh, this is a debit memo, right? Pag debit memo, deducted to compute for the uh, adjusted book balance. So, you deduct 5,000. And disbursement, since this is disbursement sa November, no? so mararecord yan siya pagka December. So you deduct 5,000 kasi hindi naman yan sa disbursement ng December. So meron ding NSF check sa December, no? Ayan, sa 7,000. And syempre, this is uh, December NSF check. So probably ma-adjust yan siya pagka January na. So if that's the case, you add 7,000 sa disbursement ng December. Okay. So, ayan. So, now, this is the adjusted book balances. 320, 290, 410, at saka 200. So, which is the same, right? Same lang sa dun sa bank. Okay. Adjusted na yung dalawa. The next question is the adjusting journal. Is diba remember... Okay, so, anong reconciling item yung ina-adjust? Siyempre yung book reconciling item. So, book reconciling items are subject for adjusting entries. So, balik sa book reconciling or book na proof of cash. So, i-consider mo lang is yung December 31 na reconciling items. So, yung ahi number 1, ahi number 2, ahi number 3. So, ahi means adjusting journal entries. So, the first journal entry as mentioned here is yung ahi number 1 which is related to customer's note collected by bank. So, ahi number 1, you debit cash in bank for 120, then you credit since this is related to note, no? So, note receivable. So, you credit note receivable for 120. This is a record customer's note collected by bank. The second one is yung bank service charge. So, ahi number two, you debit bank service charge for 3,000. Then, you credit cash in bank for 3,000. So, this is to record bank service charge for the month of December. And lastly, NSF check. So, NSF check ahi number three. So, you debit account receivable for 7,000. Then, you credit cash in bank for 7,000. This is to record NSF check not redeposited. Yeah. So those are the adjusting journal entries for the elucidative problem number 3 requirement. Yeah. So we're done with elucidative problem number 3. The next one naman is yung 
Elucidate problem number four. And these are the suggested solutions. So this is the cash. Uh, this question is more on cash count. No? Yeah. So in connection with the audit of financial statements of Pidot's company for the year ended December 31, 2019, you perform a surprise count of petty cash fund and undeposited collections under the custody of Mr. Bongo at 8.15 a.m. on January 3, 2020. Your account disclosed the following. So you have the coins, the checks, and the other items found in the cash box. And the additional information. Question, uh, required uh, compute for any shortage or overage. So the first thing to do to compute for the shortage or overage, you're going to check muna, no? Ano pala yung mga accountability CP dots or ni Mr. Bongo? Yeah. So ano yung mga accountability si Mr. Bongo? So, siyempre, first one is uh, he is the PT, petty cash custodian. No? So, meron siya petty cash balance sa 20,000. Aside from this one, siyempre, is yung mga official receipts. Yeah. Or number 352 to 355. And the uh, two pay envelopes. And take note, na-open kasi niya. No? Yeah. And then, aside from this one, you're going to check if there are any unreceipts collection. So, check mo yung official receipt. Yeah. Versus mo sa checks. As you can see, the first one is minus 25600 no? or number 353 for the check from Datu Mahmud. And 6600 from Tom Goods. So the problem here is hindi niya na issue. This is yung kay uh, Emong De Leon at saka yung kay Apple Bova. So let's check ano pala itong dalawa. So, yung first one, Emong De Leon. So, this is talaga, no? Uh, collections coming from customer. And unfortunately, hindi siya na, hindi siya na isuhan ng official receipts. That's why, accountabilities. And Apple Baba, this is related to uh, cash advance, no? Or yung uh, reimbursement ni, uh, sino ba yun siya? Si Pedro. Ayan. Or ni sales manager for his value trip. So, 3360. So, that's why part pa rin siya ng accountability ni Mr. Bongo. So, if that's the case, put all the accountabilities here for a total of 152960. Ito yung hahanapin natin. So, sana ba ito 152960? So, you start with, syempre, the bills and coins. So, bills and coins, you're going to check this one based on the given. No? Arrange mo lang sila lahat and multiply. 100 multiplied by 10. So, meron siyang 1,000 down to 16. Then, aside from bills and coins, meron din checks. Ah, before that one, ito pala. So, hindi kasali yung unused postage stamps, sa kasi this is supplies. Okay? And the next one, checks. So, all checks as mentioned in the problem, except for the last one. Kasi yung last one, tayo yung drawer. So, pag tayo yung drawer, this is more on cash payment, no? Hindi man ito cash receipts. So, cash payment. That's why hindi kasali yung sa last part na 54,000. Uh, 54, and, underparents vouchers. Okay? So, these are expenses coming from the petty cash fund, no? So, that's why kasali siya as part of the cash items counted. And if you're going to total this one lahat, yes, 19,140. And total mo lahat yung total cash and cash items counted, so 112,623. Uy, kulang. Ayan. Dapat 1,2,960. So, meron siyang malaki-laking cash shortage of 4,332. So, the answer for question number 1 is 40,332. Okay, ha? so if you're going to compete for or you're going to compete for cash shortage or overage, siyempre, start with the accountabilities down to different cash and cash items counted. And I think this is the last one yata. 
Alas na pala. Yeah, thank you po for your time and patience for listening to my video presentation. And if you do have questions, so feel free to ask me lang po. Then, the references are here. Okay. Abrera and Rufi. Thank you po. Goodbye and God bless.